This is a chunk of foam that is in the shape to resemble a deer. <laughs> the targets on my right could not withstand 500 shots. The targets on the left did. Will the deer today withstand 500 shots? That's the big question. There are, however, three things that are terrible about this target, and there's three things that are pretty stinking good that I like. My goal is to help you make an informed decision before you purchase this so that you don't waste any money on the wrong target. There's an insert that you can replace. So if you hit the right spot all the time, you can replace this target, at least part of it, relatively cheap. It feels like it's probably 12 and a half pounds. Loser cleans the toilets. How heavy is it? I cleaned the toilets yesterday. No, my <laughs> toilet. <laughs> it is 13 pounds and seven ounces. <gasps> Arrow penetration test. Money. For those of you who are concerned about my unicorn, it's just a cyst. They removed it, no worries, we're good to go. Ooh, heart shot. So the deer is rocking, which is quite interesting because that's gonna absorb some of the energy, probably help the target wear out less. A nice clean mark. Wow, that's really dense. We got six and eight inches. That is very similar to the Reinhardt target, which is extremely, extremely dense, but it didn't seem near as hard to pull out the arrows. Let's test that next. Put it right in the middle, suckers. What a shot. The deer is containing the arrows completely. For me, anything under 40 is pretty acceptable. Like the bones first. The bone, oh. What was that? Looked like 35. 35, compound. Yeah, that's kind of 65. The target zone is not symmetrical, but it's roughly eight inch area to shoot. And that insert is also 10 inches thick. The deer is 32 inches tall at the back and 42 at the head. The butt of the deer is much thinner than the shooting area. I think this is probably to keep the cost down. The deer can be purchased separate from the base or they can be purchased as a combo. If you're shooting outdoors, it might be better to just stake the deer into the ground. The deer. So we're probably supposed to shoot from the other side because when you pull out, you see the lip here. So if it's supposed to be double-sided, that'd be unfortunate. Are we gonna shoot out the insert? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, I guess you're not supposed to shoot from this side either. Yeah, you were, you were, hey, hey, hey. That's all the way in. Hey, 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 gentle. Basically, the insert only slides in from one direction. You can pick your poison. Do you want the possibility of shooting the insert out or the difficulty of pulling the insert out when you're removing the arrows? We concluded that pulling the arrows out is the better option. <laughs> Are you the more arrows you shoot in the target, the harder it seems to pull them out because there's nowhere for your hand to go to hold the insert in. I really don't like how this insert comes out so easy when you're pulling the arrows from the target. So I had an idea to run a bead of hot glue on the edge, hopefully to where it would keep this insert in place when you're pulling arrows out, but no, not so strong that you couldn't run a little knife in there or something to take it out when it's time to replace the insert. Let's test it now. So here's the strategy. I'm gonna push this out about an inch, run a bead on this side, run a bead on this side. Just a nice thick bead. Should have enough time. And then as Kaz taught me. The hot glue is no longer hot, and so I'm gonna shoot arrows in the most dense part of the target, the part we haven't worn out yet, so that they'll be as hard as possible to pull out to see if it'll hold it. When you hit the target, it rocks a little bit. I don't know if that's by design, but it definitely makes the target last longer. Let's see if this hot glue trick is a hack or not. So normally I would place my hand right here to make sure the insert stays in. I'm gonna to try to pull out the arrows without placing my hand on the insert. I'm gonna pull the arrows out. Let's see if the insert moves at all. That arrow is pretty tight. Hey, that's looking pretty good. I've shot a few more through and it's holding up really, really good. Actually, let me see if I can hit it out uh, just with my hand here. 
I'm not sure how hard it will be to remove. I should be able to just do one little cut around the edges. I am attempting to cut the glue because I don't want to enlarge this hole. So it might be a good idea to do less glue than I did, maybe just on one side. Okay, and if I'm thinking accurately, I just need to unleash my inner Kaz. Where's Kaz when you need him? There we go. I approve of the hot glue method, but just start with a little bit. So this is what we're gonna do, 100 groups of five. Keep you updated as we go. <laughs> this is the 100 shot update. This is the 250 shot update on the back. We are getting some pushing through and the arrows are getting easier to remove and they're going through a lot further into the target. I'm not sure if this will hold the 500 shots, so there's one way to find out. We're getting really close to the arrows coming through and Kaz is starting to get quite nervous that his fletchings will break again. <laughs> they are, they're just getting destroyed. <laughs> no, they're not. But you can see this arrow here, how far it went. Uh, I don't even know if the knock's sticking out. Is it right fully embedded? There. Okay, it's barely sticking out down there. 270 shots. If this is the first video of the series you've seen, we are trying to wear out these targets by hitting in the same spot every single time. So our wear is gonna be quicker. I broke my arrow. Then told you that it's gonna break an arrow. and that could be a downside to a 3D target is you generally are gonna aim in the same spot every single time. Unlike a four or six or 14 sided target, you have different points to aim for all the time. This target's super interesting. It doesn't seem to wear evenly, meaning these three arrows hit within two inches of this one spot, but this one specific spot's worn out significantly more, causing an extra two feet of penetration on the target for this one arrow. It's common sense for all targets that if you hit the same area, that area will wear out quicker. But with this target, it seems to be a little bit expedited to wear out that one area if your arrow hits in the same spot multiple times. In other words, this target doesn't self heal very much. Whereas a really strong foam compressed target like the Reinhardt, that one is so dense that it kind of self heals a little bit more. At least that's the way I'm describing it. For example, let's say I push in here. It's kind of hard to push the arrow in. I find a little spot, it's quite a bit easier and then I find a different spot and it just goes, oh, that one's still difficult. One of these spots in here, there you go, all the way through the target. So when you hit the wrong spot, you're in some trouble. Or the right spot, depending on how you look at it. Did that go through? Now watch this, I'll shoot two inches to the right. And it stops like easy. That's literally half an inch to the right. All the arrows are very close, but if you hit the wrong location, you know that we're half an inch off and then one inch from this one, it, it busts through. We just had the first complete pass through at 431 shots. The front of the target looks like this, and the back of the target looks like this, and a new insert will cost you $30. If you're someone who hunts and doesn't practice on a 3D target, I think you're missing out. Especially if you're not practicing on the 3D target that is relative to the animal you're hunting. If you're hunting deer, 
get a deer. If you're hunting elk, get an elk. Turkey, get a turkey. I think that's very beneficial for hunting. It helps you get closer to the hunting process mentally and helps you become a better ethical hunter, in my opinion. It's definitely helped me out, especially moving this out around in the woods to practice in the most realistic scenarios as possible. I enjoy shooting 3D targets and this one's not too bad. I'm a fan that it's a 3D target. I kind of actually like the fact that it rocks back and forth, which is helping it last longer. And I also like that the inserts are 30 or 34 bucks or something like that, so it's much cheaper than getting a brand new target. I don't like how small the target is. I also don't like the type of foam they used. They used the same foam on the insert as everywhere else. And I guess that makes sense for manufacturing, but if it was a little bit of a different formula of foam, maybe a little denser, maybe a little more self-healing, I would have liked that. It was hard to pull the arrows out in the very beginning, but after the first 50 shots, it got significantly easier until the arrows just went through the target. The last thing I don't like is that the way that insert's made, it, it falls out. The friction fit is not strong enough. So even if there was like a foam dowel you could put in there or something, I don't know what the solution would be but the hot glue works all right. If you're looking for a cheap 3D target, you can totally get by with this one. The flaws are not bad enough that would keep me from getting it again. I bet you probably get what you pay for if you buy a nicer 3D target, but it wasn't that bad. It just wasn't that good either. I'm excited to review this target back here. Stay shatterproof, my friends. I'll see you on the next video.